Okay, this video is a response to YouTube user Onias, um, who has a problem with swing rhythm, um, which obviously is pretty central to jazz, blues, all that kind of thing. And he, um, at least I'm, I'm assuming you're a he, Onias, it doesn't say in your profile, so apologies if you're, if you're a lady. Um, what he describes is a, is a fairly typical problem in that Onias has had quite a lot of classical piano lessons and possibly as a result of that classical training is struggling to master the swing okay that is that's pretty common I've, I've, it's not something i've experienced myself but i have heard it talked about a few times um, so there we have a swing rhythm okay what i'm going to do in this video is talk a little bit about how we deal with swing a little bit about what it is how it's sometimes misrepresented and a quick exercise to help you to help you kind of hopefully master it. One of the problems you're going to have with swing if you've had classical lessons is the way it's often represented on paper. Okay, In a lot of sheet music swing is approximated as um, dotted quaver followed by semiquaver, dotted quaver, semiquaver, so that's eighth note, sixteenth note, eighth note, sixteenth note um, if, if you're in the US. One of the problems with that is it's a huge over, over approximation. It's so inaccurate um, because a, um, a a dotted quaver is three times as long as a semiquaver. So if we played that as dotted quavers and semiquavers, it would actually sound something like this. So that's one source of confusion, one kind of source of, of problems, that when people are playing these syncopated rhythms, that they're used to playing classical syncopated rhythms, which is typically a dotted note followed by um, you know, a note half, half the length of the original, um, dotted quaver, semi-quaver. Some publishers try and get around that by, instead of approximating swung rhythms as um, a crotchet followed by a quaver tied together as a triplet. So the first note is twice the length of the second note rather than three times the length of the second note. That's closer, it's much closer. It's much closer to a properly swung syncopated jazz or blues rhythm. It tends not to be used much because it's really confusing to look at on the page. Publishers don't like doing it. Sometimes what they do is they write the, the dotted quaver, semi quaver, and, but at the top they add a little note saying dotted quaver, semi quaver equals crotchet plus quaver tied as a triplet which isn't really satisfactory. Um, one of the reasons it's not satisfactory is that swung rhythm has much more, it is about much more than the, just the length of the note. It's about where you put the stress on different notes as well. As you can hear in there, there's a lot of stress going on particular notes especially on the, the notes that are slightly longer, tend to get a slight extra push, which is why it's kind of misleading to think of swung rhythm, properly swung rhythm from jazz or blues, as simply a matter of note length, because it's not. If you're struggling to get it, one of the first things you should do is think about the way you're counting, okay? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now in classical music, in the, in the Western European classical tradition, if you have a four beat bar, the stress in that bar naturally falls on the first and the third beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the same is actually true in a lot of sort of rock music and pop music. If you listen to a, 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 a standard four beat played on uh, a drum kit by a pop drummer, he'll emphasise beats one and three. Beat one, he'll put down his bass drum, and beat three, he'll hit the snare. Dum dum ch, bum dum dum ch. Hey, I, I could be a beatbox. Anyway, um, so jazz is, uh, and blues is unlike that because in jazz and blues, the emphasis falls on the second and fourth beat of the four beat bar, which is the off beat. Okay, sorry if this is a bit theoretical, but it's quite important. So instead of having one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And having that sense of the stress on the offbeat is really important to getting your, your swung rhythm right. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now let me see if I can do it just on the offbeat. 
See how the offbeat stress marries with the stress in the swing. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So often what you're getting in the swing is a stress in the note when there's an off stress in the rhythm. But sometimes it marries up as well. It's quite a complex relationship between the, the offbeat stress that's typical of jazz and blues and the swing. So without digging down too deeply into the dynamics of it, one thing you could do on the ass to practice your swing is just a little movement like that which keeps your hand in one position. Start off counting. Whoops. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And if you're not quite getting it right, start to put the stress on the offbeat, the two and the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That kind of gives it a feeling of drive, which is key to swung rhythm. You know, it should really feel like it's driving and pushing you forward. Okay, it's almost a kind of industrial kind of feeling. And then what you can do is you get confident with that, it starts to put a left hand in and just play like a simple 12 bar. Um, something like this. Okay, and then take from there. I mean, there are other exercises you can do. I, 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 I've talked to Onias already, and I know he's doing some of this stuff. But if you're struggling, then try playing your scales. I hope you're practicing your scales regularly. Right? Try playing your scales in a swung rhythm. Okay, bit of an approximation, but anything that you can do to get out of the the standard classical. Emphasis on beats one and three and the very straight sort of four bar discipline that's sort of beaten into you when you're having classical lessons. I'm not making a value judgment there. You know, I love playing classical piano and th that kind of sense of the, the, the one and three stress in a four beat bar is absolutely key to so much music, you know, from from Schubert to John Philip Sousa marches, you know. Um, but if you're playing jazz and blues, you have to kind of get on the off beat, OK, the irregular beat, OK? So there we go. Have a go at that and see how it goes. I, I mean, I must confess, um, playing a swung rhythm is one of the very, very, very few things that I've always been able to do fairly naturally on the piano. Um, so because of that, it's quite difficult to think about and analyse what I'm doing. So I hope that's useful. Give it a go. Give me some feedback. Let me know how you get on. And um, if it needs digging into more deeply, then certainly I'm happy to do that. OK, there we go. Um, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, uh, folks, check out my book, How to Really Play the Piano, which has got chapters on things like chords and starting to improvise using 12-bar blues and various other resources in there. Great backup if you're enjoying the videos. Fourteen ninety five for the print edition. It's available in North America, the UK and Europe. Or you can get the digital edition right away for £9.95 anywhere in the world. OK, I'll uh, in include, a, include a link on how to find that. OK, as I say, any questions, give me a shout. Hopefully, on the that has just pushed you a little bit further down the road on, on, to mastering this. OK, there we go.